What's up guys? Today we'll be looking at player owned ports. Ports is a high level minigame that was released in December 2012 in which you send ships on voyages. This minigame has an eastern theme and you explore new regions and obtain exotic items. You can access ports via the portal in Port Serum. Now if you want to complete ports you're going to spend months sending voyages so starting early is a good idea. To start player on ports, you need any of the following skills at level 90. Agility, Construction, Cooking, Divination, Dungeoneering, Fishing, Herblore, Hunter, Prayer, Runecrafting, Slayer, or Thieving. Getting any of these requirements unlocks an adventurer who will go on missions. As soon as you meet any of these requirements, you want to start ports immediately. If you have none of these requirements, the only piece of content you have is Meg, who gives you XP in one of the mentioned skills, helping you unlock ports. The more adventures you unlock, the more content there will be. The main content of ports is simple. Send your ships on voyages. There are several regions to explore, and you unlock them as you progress. When you start in the first region, the Ark, you will have the bare bones of ports. You will also get a captain's log once you unlock ports, which gives you free teleports to ports, and you can send ships remotely. When you reach level 90 in a skill, you will unlock an adventurer in ports. Each adventurer has a chance to show up in your port each day during reset, and if they show up, they will stay in your port until the next day. Each adventurer has their own storyline, which advances by sending them on special voyages. There are 12 adventurers to unlock completing and completing one trio storyline is a comp cape requirement while completing all storylines is a trim comp cape requirement and master quest cape requirement. In addition to the storylines, the adventurers also help you towards earning rewards in ports. There are several regions to explore. Each region will have their own set of resources and crew. You start with the Ark. In this region, you collect bamboo and missions will be fast. As you keep going on voyages in a region, you gain distance. And once you reach the max distance in a region, you unlock the next region. The missions will get longer and the distance required for the next region will be higher. You have up to four ships to go on voyages. When sending ships on voyages, it is possible for the mission to fail. There are three stats that can contribute to a mission success, which are morale, combat, and seafaring. There are several combinations of these three stats that could appear, such as morale only or one with two stats or all three stats. You will notice that many missions will not have a 100% mission success, and that's by design. A fourth stat exists, which is speed, and it does not contribute to the mission success. It determines how long a voyage will take. When starting out, voyages will take about 40 minutes to complete, and when you reach the last region, voyages will take over 12 hours to complete. The simple way to increase success is to organize your crew. Your crew is the backbone of the mission. You need a well-rounded roster of crewmates if you want to complete missions. Each ship must have a captain and up to five crewmates. You can recruit them from the crew roster interface. Each crew member will display their stats and some have traits. Captains have a mix of four stats, while crew can focus on one stat. The majority of crewmates will focus on one stat and a way to identify them is their color. A green crewmate will have high morale, a red crewmate will have a high combat stat, and a blue crewmate will have a high seafaring stat. As you send your crew on missions, they gain XP and can level up to level 10, which will max out their stats. It is also possible for captains and crew to have traits which provide positive or negative effects. You can check what they do by hovering over the traits. One notable trait is solidarity, which is good to have when a voyage requires at least two stats. Another one is merchant, which will give you more rewards from the voyages when they succeed. And this trait will be useful when you reach significant progress to be able to farm ancient bones. Some traits are so bad, such as negative 100 in a stat, 
that you should dismiss that crew member and hire a new one. If you receive a message when going on missions that you have a low success rate, reorganize your crew for better success. If you don't, your crewmates can die and you will have to replace them. Upgrading your ships also increases mission success. There are a few parts of the that you can modify, such as your hull, your rudder, your ram, and your deck items. Let's go over the rudder first, since it's the simplest. Rudders increase your speed, allowing you to finish missions on time. They do not increase any other stats, so you do not have to worry about it affecting mission success. The next one is the ram. There are rams that increase morale or combat, but never both. So you will have to choose one that's better for a specific mission. After that, we have the hull, which has a mixture of the three stats and speed. This is the second most important part of your ship because it has higher stats than the rams. Last but not least, we have the deck items, which heavily contribute to your mission. These provide the largest boost towards a single stat, up to 2,000 in morale or seafaring, and you get two of them. You can always mix and match them if you want. When ships complete their mission, they will come back with some goods. When you first start off, you will receive bamboo and chimes. In the final region, you will receive azure and chimes. These resources are used for upgrading your port, hiring crew, upgrading ships, and so on. There are several hotspots in your port. When you first start ports, the buildings are dilapidated and you will gain no bonus. As you progress, you will be able to upgrade these buildings, giving certain buffs and access to some rewards. One of the most important buildings in your port is the office, which gives you access to more ships for you to go on voyages. You start off with one ship and you will quickly gain a second one. The next building is the bar, which boosts your chance of receiving better captains and adventurers. After that, we have the workshop, which gives you access to skilling nodes that you can use to craft your rewards and access to a bank chest. The lodgings give you a chance of finding better crewmates. The shipwright gives your ships a slight boost in stats. The warehouse gives a small boost in resources from missions. And then there are totem hotspots. There are several unique ones and there are four plots. There are six different totems that you can mix and match. There are two totems that I recommend using. The telescope gives an increased chance of receiving scroll missions. And the jade statue gives an additional chance of getting trade resources. I currently have four jade statues, so I have a better chance of getting ancient bone missions. The last structure we have are the icon hotspots. You get three of them, and you can attune them to a specific adventure that you have unlocked. There are a few random events within ports, and completing them will give you a variety of benefits. A very useful reward from these is the lifeboat, which will save your crew from dying. You only need four of them since it is applied to the ship and is permanent. Some missions will reward you with trade goods, which is separate from resources. These missions are rare and have higher requirements than resource missions. The amount of resources you get varies depending on the region you are in. You will need high rune crafting, smithing, fletching, and cooking to create items. Before you can start making items, you need to have unlocked that item by going on scroll missions. Four successful scroll missions are needed for each item and you will have to focus on the item through the ports interface. This does mean that you can choose which order you unlock items. You can make level 85 Tetsu, Death Lotus, and Sea Singer armors. And you can make level 85 weapons upgradable to level 88. You can also make Rock Tail and Sailfish Soup here. Probably the reason why many people do ports is Scrimshaws. Scrimshaws are pocket slot items and are created with the ancient bones at the Scrimshaw Crafter. There are various skilling and combat scrimshaws that you can make, and the three best scrimshaws, the scrimshaw of vampirism, scrimshaw of cruelty, and scrimshaw of the elements, each go for 6 mil in the GE. If you cannot afford to use Arathor's grimoire and high-level bosses, you can use scrimshaw of cruelty and scrimshaw of elements, since their superior versions give a 
plus 6.6% damage boost to range and magic, respectively. Anyway, that's going to be the video. I hope you guys enjoy, and I will see you in the next one.